Hello, welcome to this session. Today we're talking about the migration of private chat inside Microsoft Teams. This is going the private chat details from one tenant to another. And I'm going to show you how it's done with the new project that's set up inside Migration Wiz. We'll go through the whole process end to end. We'll set up all the permissions and all the application registration requirements that are that are necessary to get this done. Then I'm going to go through and do a full migration of a chat so you can see how it exists in the source and then obviously how it goes into the target as well. Now, before we just jump in and start the project here, which you can see on the main screen, there's a new item here, Collaboration Private Chats Project. What I want to do is go through the prerequisites and the application registration, get all that um, done ahead of time before we start creating the project. It's much easier if we get all those, those squared away first. So I'm going to have a look at the help desk article that explains really what we're doing here. And this, this gives us all the links we need to get those uh, privileges in place in both tenants. So what you'll see as you go through here on that chat migration guide, you can see here when you find it, it's under the 365 migrations and Microsoft Teams migrations, you'll find there's the chat migration guide in here. Now, when you go through this, first thing it talks about is the application permissions here, and it gives the link to go ahead and go and do those. And we'll go to those in a minute, but you'll see also quite handy as well down here, under the prepare of the source environment and the destination environment, we have those links that we need here for the full control for the source and the delegate access for the target. So we're going to refer back to those in a moment. But what we do first is look at these requirements that we have. And I go up to the top here and we click on this this one here. And, and this is the requirements for a normal Teams migration. And obviously they 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 cross over for what's needed for the private chat. So the, the items I'm picking out of here that we need to do, if we go down a little bit, you'll see here it's talking about firstly, yes, we need the Teams for control. That's the same link that you'll find in the, the chat uh, guide. But what we also need to do here is create what it says here, a security group uh, called Migration Wiz inside the uh, the 365 portal. And the user that we're assigning as the admin to do those tasks needs to be a member of that group as well. That user that we're going to use as the service account effectively for the migration does need to have a Teams license applied to it and a cloud only account. And we need to turn off the MFA. So you want to put them in the conditional access policy that, that turns that off so we can um, have that, that set as well. So I'm going to go ahead and do that in the tenant so you can see how that's to be done. Um, and then we'll move on to these other these registration components here. And we need to do this on both the source and the destination side for this um, security group. What we do have here is a migration with service account. I like to have a separate service account for these type of things. I don't like to do these migrations with what we consider like an admin account that just has rights to do them and plug those in. It's a good practice to create a separate uh, service account for these type of migrations. And if we go in and look at this one, it does need to be the global admin to do this type of Teams migration. Uh, but you can see it's also licensed. It does have a mailbox there. And obviously it's a cloud only account based on those prereqs that we had already. So, so this one is really set up, ready to go. I don't advise then also that you use that account for anything else. Just keep it just for the migrations. It's good because then it's also very easy to just delete once you're done and, and just be done with it so that uh, it doesn't get used for anything else. I don't ad advise by sharing that password with anybody just to use it because obviously it does have those extended rights to, to perform the migration itself. So what we do have in here for the conditional access policy, if we go down here, you can see conditional access. In this particular tenant, I don't have those uh, the uh, defaults turned on in terms of the security defaults. I use a conditional access policy instead. And you can see here, if I look at MFA policy here, uh, you can notice that in terms of the users it's applied to, it is applied to all users with an exclusion. And the exclusion on that is actually currently my admin account, but it's mainly this, this migration with user here, uh, which is like, again, the service account we're going to be using. So that's taken care of, but I do need to go back in here now and just go to the groups. Let's have a look at all of our groups here. And we will go and add a, a new one security. And we just call that one migration with and, uh, for migration uh, purposes, and we'll put in a member, which will be, if I scroll down here, excuse me, scrolling down a lot. We can do a search if we want to, but I just find that we can just pick it out from the make. There he is. Select that and create that group. 
I find it easier to do inside the uh, the enter portal than it is actually in the the next 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 item in the the standard admin panel. But you can see from here, um, if you do a search on here for Mig, you'll see there's our migration with group all created and with the the users assigned. As you can see there. So that's all uh, taken care of. We do need to go then into the target tenant as well. Um, I'm not going to do that on this video. You can see exactly what needs to be done. It's exactly the same. So we'll just um, consider that one uh, that you would need to do in the target side as well. Now to give the migration where system writes into the team structure to be able to pull the data out, we obviously need to do the application registration that I mentioned before. Now we find this, there's one in this window here you can see it talks about migration with pch for control and pch delegate access these are the two we need to run this obviously on the source and then on the destination that's what it needs to have it is slightly different to the the teams one which you probably would have seen in the uh, the teams uh setup that we were just looking at it is the one that talks about the pch so make sure we 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 have the correct one in the tenant so what i like to do here is rather than just click on this, I like to copy that link and actually paste it into the window that we have the, the tenant open. So I'm going to paste that in here like that. And that will come up with the, the account we want to use, which will be this. Uh, we use the admin account and you can see it's going to apply those rights there. We say accept. And of course, that'll just drop us back to the main front screen, which means it's actually worked, which is good. Now let me show you what that has actually done and set up because it is good practice then to obviously remove that once we've finished our migration. So where we go in there is we go to applications and we look at enterprise applications. You should find if we do a sort by date order there like that, you can see here we have the PCH full control. And if we go into that, you could then go in and look at the permissions, which it has. Just look at permissions down here. You'll see all the permissions, which we just accepted, which is obviously uh, expected. Um, like I say, it's a good thing to then uh, go back and delete this once you've finished with your migration. It's just good, good housekeeping to go and clean that up. So with those prerequisites completed on the source side, I'll go away and I'll do the target side in the background. So, so consider those to be done as well. It's exactly the same, like I mentioned before. Um, so now we're really ready to go in and create that uh, project inside the migration with console now. And as I say, the reason I do all these prereqs before we create the project, it makes the project set up nice and easy and we can jump straight into that migration without having to jump backwards and forwards for different prereqs as it's going through. So that's, that's, that's my um, best practice that I, I would consider to do. Um, how you do it yourself completely fine if you want to do it as you go through the project you're, you're more than happy to do that um, but obviously you know that these these prerequisites have to be done before you start the project uh, you know, running the project itself so on the main screen here you can see there's our collaboration private chats project which is now separate from the other projects it's its own little box there as you can see so we go into that and we get the same thing here we would enter a project name and a customer like so, I've already got a customer set up there for Cozy Mouse, which obviously just relates to the CozyMouse.com domain name. So that's done. We'll just hit next step on there. And we set up the endpoint. So we're going to set up the endpoint for both the source and the destination. So I'm going to say we're going to do a new one here. And when we do that, we get the quite simple uh, things we put in. Obviously, we name the endpoint and the endpoint type, which obviously is, is set to private chat. And we give it the user uh, name and password for the, uh, the service account, which is that MigWiz account we've set up. So let me just put those in. And then we hit the verify 365 credentials, which will go away and check that not only is the password in the correct, but it has the rights to be able to perform those functions. And it'll also check that... Uh, uh, application which we set up as well just to make sure it can connect to that as well and do what it needs to do and we're hoping like it comes back here and says verified with the tick which means we are certainly good to go with that so from this point i'll hit add and you can see that uh, that's all done it is talking about uh, making sure we have that pch4 control which obviously we've done and then we hit the next step, which will be setting up the destination endpoint. So again, we'll put a new one in here and we'll name that and put the details in from the target tenant, which we do like so. And again, I will hit the verify, make sure everything's good. It'll come back pretty quickly and tell us whether it's happy. And yes, it is. So once again, account's good. The enterprise application is good. And we are set to just hit add on there. It'll come through to this screen and obviously with the status and we say save go to summary and save project 
And there we go. So we are in place now, ready to add some people in to do this migration with. Now, before I jump in and just add these people in, I want to show you what I'm going to be migrating. So I've got a user, which is going to be Bob Jones at Cozy Mouse. We're going to migrate all of his chat data across into Bob Jones at Planium.com. Those are the, the two source and targets that you saw me setting up previously. So let's have a look at what Bob has already in there. So looking in here, you can see I'm, I'm logged in on this particular window as Bob. And if I look at here, you can see Bob Jones at Cozy Mouse. He doesn't have a lot of chat for this demo purpose. It'll work quite well, but you can see he's got some basic conversations going on there, which we're just going to use to, to migrate. If I bring across what he currently has set up on the Plenium side, it is a live user on that side. Let me just drag that one over. So you can see here, Bob Jones at Plenium has nothing in the chat window at all. So this is the one we're going to be migrating the data into. So we'll add our user in now. We're going to use the quick add option, which we click here gives us the option to type in that single address, which we'll do like that. And we'll just hit save item and close and that'll drop that into the main screen here. Now it's always good before you start just to select that and do the, on the start button there, the verify credentials, which will just go through and check that everything is good and bound together properly on the source and the target side, make sure everything can work correctly. It's a good option to do that, making sure you don't have any issues before you start the full migration. So I've just kicked that off now. I've got to submit it. Let's have a look at what it comes back with shortly and make sure those are all correct. And then we can start with the actual migration itself. So this one, as you can see, has come back, completed verification. So we're good to go with the actual migration itself. Now to do that, we just click on the users we want to migrate. From the start item here, we say full migration, and it'll take us to a normal migration with screen that I'm sure you'll be used to. And you can see it's going to do the private chats. Now, this option here is if the if we're putting into a chat, uh, the uh, Teams chat with where that particular user is a part of, they will then have that chat hydrated in. If you don't select that, it will bring the chat in, but they'll be coming like user one, user two, that sort of scenario. So if it's always a good option to have this selected, and then of course the hydration that involves that user is going to work correctly. So, so in this case, we will actually use it and we hit the start migration there. And that will then, if I refresh that, it should show that it's a processing stage um, and we just wait until that has completed its migration. Then we can have a look at the, the target and see what's happened there. Now, before we jump in, obviously that's completed now, before we jump into Bob's account and have a look at what it's like on the source there, what I do want to do is I'm actually going to migrate another user as well, because I want to show you the difference between what happens with a non-migrated user uh, for people you've been talking to and a user that has been migrated as well as part of this private chat um, scenario. So I'm just going to add another one in called Buck Rogers. I'm just going to do that, uh, that migration uh, to complete it. Uh, and then we'll have a look at what the source and destination look after that. Okay, so that was pretty quick. Buck Rogers is now done as well. And the reason I do that is because Bob and Buck have been talking on the Cozy Mouse tenant and we've migrated both of their accounts across to Planium. The other users that were in the Cozy Mouse tenant, uh, which you'll see in a moment, uh, were not migrated and you'll see the behavior of the target is quite different based on that scenario. So let's bring up the, the window for the, the migrated teams. And you can see this one here. So let's look at this first one here. The chat between Bailey Wilson and Bob Jones has been called that. And you'll notice that if you look at the participants, it's actually the, the migration with service account and just Bob Jones. So if I were to continue carrying on here and put hello there, obviously that's not going to go to Bailey. She hasn't been migrated and she's not part of this whole conversation because she doesn't even have an account inside the Planium tenant. Um, and of course, even if she did, we've got to look at the mapping between them. So if you're going to bring across chats between people, they have have to be part of the private chat uh, migration that you're doing in this system. So of course, then it would, would bring that over. As you can see here, carrying on with this, she's got no idea obviously that happens. We could add her in if she comes in later, but obviously this is, this is an important scenario to see. The difference, however, is have a look at this one. This is Bob Jones and Buck Rogers. And if I were to look at these, it says originally posted by Bob, that's all good. But I can put in here, hello, that's all good there. And you'll notice as well that Buck is that he's not online, but he is part of this migration. So if we did log on as Bob, 
uh, sorry, as Buck inside the Palladium tenant, we would start to see these conversations. We've got the migration with service account in there. You might want to just go through and, and remove that as well. That's um, completely fine to do that. But this now means that this chat between Bob and Buck in the new tenant is now completely live and they can communicate backwards and forwards as they previously did. So there's obviously a few things to consider there, making sure that if you're doing a private chat migration, you really should be doing it for all users that are coming across and all users that people talk to. There could be some confusion on the target side if people are not being migrated. Obviously, conversations show up like this. Um, so that's obviously uh, important to, to know about. Um, and also the the things that don't come across, you know, things like the, uh, the, the links and more than 30 days worth of chat, uh, things like that. And to get more of a handle on that, let's just jump back to our private chat migration guide here you can see in the not migrated tab here you can see all the things that are not and importantly links that are pasted in the chat including documents and images things like that are, are not brought across what is migrated yes all things like the you know the one-to-one -one chats group chats chat titles all of that is is brought across so that will definitely become part of it but you can see um, from the the makeup of of the tool here it is quite important that you scope your migration correctly and also set the stage for the users that are going to be migrated so they know what's coming on the other end it may look a little bit different to what they're expecting so you do need to make sure you communicate with them to make sure that they are understanding of what happens that uh, uh, if they do carry on with a conversation they need to make sure that the person is actually in there So that concludes this session on what we're doing with the, the private chat migration for Teams. Uh, please remember, just refer to those help desk articles if you need any other information or obviously log a support ticket if necessary too with the, the BitTitan team. But I do hope that was uh, useful in presenting this, this new project type inside the Migration Wiz tool. Thank you very much.